What's going on? We are up against 211 New Avengers 2 or something like that. All right, so this war, this is war number three. No headband today. And I've got kind of, we, we had to kind of improvise a little bit. So uh, one of our guys, unfortunately, is having some pretty extreme phone issues. And it, it caused a death in section one, like super laggy. And um, so we, so I ended up taking his uh, scheduled fights after his first fight. And then he took the lane that I was, I had scheduled for myself, uh, which was just two fights in section two, both quake fights and both for the most part, I think really easy ones. Um, so, uh, switching up the team. So anyway, we have got this domino on masochism. Now this node, Apocalypse just absolutely destroys this node. Um, and we've already got a White Mags pre-fight on here. Apocalypse is metal, so I'm going to benefit from that. So I'm going to have passive parry stuns. I go to check my masteries and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to keep the suicides off for now. I was thinking maybe I would throw on the suicides or the just the bleed suicide to give myself some extra attack because the next fight that I'm taking is a quake fight where I where I definitely want that extra attack. But I thought, you know, maybe I'll just give myself bleed immunity in the process. But with Apocalypse, it's really, it, it's just totally unnecessary. And, and honestly, it's probably a little bit detrimental because you want to be throwing his specials to get that burst damage. And his health pool is so huge, especially when boosted, that um, I think a couple seasons ago I was running Apocalypse with Suicides, and uh, he was annihilating my item use every single war. So <clears throat> once I stopped, it's been amazing with Apocalypse. He's, I think at this point he's one of the, <sighs> he's one of the best champs in the game. Absolutely. I think he's the most valuable mutant. I don't think that he individually he's the best, but anyway. Um, all right, so this fight I was a little bit nervous about just because it's Domino, but I'm gonna play this fight like extremely conservatively. And I just, I don't wanna fin my, finish my combos on a medium. Um, I wanna land every parry before I, you know, before I make a move. Um, anytime she's lucky, I'm not gonna attack her at all. And, um, and yeah, so I, I mean, I do have, I get to, I start this with uh, two additional genetic code because she's a mutant. And once this fight is over, all I've built Apocalypse up to this maximum for genetic code. So, um, we're going with the SP1 recycle here just because of the burst damage. And I'm trying to end this fight as quickly as possible. Here she goes lucky, so I just back off. I did land a parry there, but I didn't want to punish and um, here I threw the heavy just to refresh the poison, but frankly, it, it wasn't necessary. And you guys see that she did purify, um, I think, one of the bleeds because of her abilities. But um, anyway, we finished that fight. We did use a combat regen, but we finished that fight at 99% uh, health or something. All right, so here we have a rank 3 cable on encroaching stun. Um, I don't really like this placement for cable. I know, I know why he's placed here because this node also has, uh, like, it's every special costs 50% less power, and every time he reaches a bar of power, he gains a power gain buff, um, and he also has a chance to gain a region buff. So it could be good placement if, for example, you were able to ban Quake, then it would be really good placement. Um, but you can't ban Quake. So here, I'm just going to block, block, block. Now I'm going to start charging my heavy. The idea was to start charging at 451. I started charging like a millisecond before that, like right between 451 and 452. And um, ultimately, it's going to be fine. You guys can see the crouching stun uh, hits while he was concussed, and therefore it just gets completely ignored. And um, the rest of this fight is, is really, it's just a time, um, time game there. So it ended up taking me about 90 seconds. And then here we have a Mr. Sinister. This is also a rank three. These guys, their defense, a um, lot of lot of rank three defenders. But um, 
yeah, so we're doing uh, we're doing Quake here. The idea was parry style to completely ignore Spite, and uh, I think I accidentally dexed at the beginning. I didn't have the patience to uh, slow this down so that I could actually talk through it because it's a Quake fight and I just don't have time for that. But uh, on this note, if you can Quake it parry style, then Quake is a really strong option. You never have to worry about Spite. You just have to not be dumb like I was and uh, just don't trigger Spite. Just play parry style. All right, here, this is a super good, super easy apocalypse fight. He's already built up. He's got four genetic code. Uh, we are going to, we're not, we're not going to boost up the mutants. Um, oh wait, I think I already had that for, for uh, Domino. But yeah, we're, we're boosted here, but um, this node is like especially easy when you have the, uh, the mutant boost, which I think I do. But anyway, all right, so it's got kinetic transfer in it. Transference and aspect of evolution. Um, again, this this would be a really really strong placement with protect if uh, you know you had the opportunity to ban like Omega and Apocalypse. And um, man, that would just be so much fun if you, could, if you could plan a defense around bans that you had in mind based on your opponent. That would be so awesome. But anyway, all right, so. Um, we get all that power back because of our SP2. We are going to trigger protect on our SP2s, as you guys can see there. But once I knock him down, that just goes away. So ultimately, it's not a big deal. It's just going to uh, kind of stunt our our damage on uh, you know on the last portion there. But uh, SP1 finishes him off, and you know I only lost about 15% health in that fight. Not bad, just from block damage. Okay, so the next two fights are uh, two fights that um, I really did not want to take, <laughs> but I I had to take them because um, because again of the phone issues, and um, yeah. So our our best Quaker. Yeah, I mean you guys know. I don't know why I'm like dancing around this, but uh, so Bryn is. I, I mean, think he's without question the best player in, in four Loki. And he's definitely the best Quaker in Four Loki. He's a, a godly Quaker. It's it's incredible what he does. But uh, he's been having phone issues, unfortunately. Um, a lot of you guys have been asking in the comment section too about um, about Bren's channel. Uh, he was uploading war uh, videos last season, war videos last season, and. Um, and again, I, I, I think this season he's not even recording because of his phone issues. So, um, yeah, if you guys were looking for new Bryn channel stuff, that's what's going on, man. Unfortunately, he's not he's not recording because he's been having phone problems. So, uh, anyway, all right. So, these are definitely Bryn Quake, uh, Bryn Quake fights. <laughs> and, um, you know, like he would look at this and just, you know, be completely unfazed. But, um, yeah, I was nervous about this. So, uh, this Kingpin fight is going to go very well. It's Rage. So, you know, it's a super slow fight. Uh, I think this ends up taking about... We're, we're going to find out here, but it takes like two and a half minutes, almost three minutes, I think. So, with class disadvantage, I guess that doesn't even matter because of the 2.5% uh, rage cap, which does apply to Aftershocks now, which is unfortunate, but... Yeah, so it takes two and a half minutes of quaking, which is not not really my favorite thing. All right, so now we have Dragon Man. Oh my God! So if you guys have watched Bryn, Bryn's channel, Bryn quakes this fight. Now this is, I would say, I would say it's a it's an above average difficulty quake fight, but not super difficult. Bryn makes it look insanely easy. And in this fight, I'm going to make it look insanely difficult. All right, so the trick is don't start charging your heavy. Hit into his block, as Bren talks about. Start get, his, get some space. Start charging heavy right before he gets a par of power. And then let off your heavy. Bait him. And then once, um, once you're able to bait him, the idea is that your aftershock will align with his power charge buff returning. And there it is, it returned. Now, when Bryn does it, it goes a lot smoother. 
But, um, yeah, it, you know, not the smoothest for me. But at this point, you know, Bryn is, Bryn is laughing at this fight at this point because there's no way for Dragon Man to get any power, and all he's got to do is not get hit. And Bryn doesn't get hit unless his phone um, intervenes. I am not Bryn, however, so there I get bopped. I accidentally let off a heavy, and I'm cornered here. So any damage that I take from him at this point, there's going to be a lot of extra burst damage dealt to me. I don't think that I would survive a full combo if I were to screw up again. So I can't screw up again. I also can't revert. A lot of times when I'm in a stressful quake fight, especially if it's stun immune, because I'm much more comfortable parry style quaking, a lot of times I'll revert to parry style just to kind of like give myself a little bit of relief. But here we can't because if I go to parry style, he'll throw his heavy. And I don't think that Quake can fully evade his heavy. I think that you have to do um, an auto evade and then a dex, a, a dex evade. And I, I would mess up the timing. And if I did mess up the timing, I could get incinerated. It's exactly the same scenario as MODOK. You, you do not want to play parry style against MODOK when you're cornered because he'll throw that heavy at you and he'll just burn you to death. So we managed to get through that fight. Like I said, above average difficulty fight, super easy Bryn fight, very difficult Taters fight. But uh, we soloed, and that's all that matters. So we're going to place our last guidance here on the boss for Legacy. And uh, boom. So this is how it started. One of our, one of our better starts in quite a while. We got through so much the map, we're like, hell yeah, we're going to win this. Boom, this is how it ended. Um, and, you know, I'm always bragging about BG3 when when we do well, when we have donuts, when we only have one death, when we win our, win our battle group against other top alliances. But uh, BG3 was the reason that for Loki lost this war. We died five times. Now, one of those times, it was, it was a phone issue. So, you know, we... I think there were four deaths that were within our, you know, kind of our in, our direct influence and our control. But regardless, uh, BG1 and BG2 and 4 Loki were phenomenal. Thank you guys for the effort. And um, yeah, so we started this season 0-3. I can't remember the last time we started the season 0-3. After this, where we are all the way down in Platinum 2. <laughs> Just crazy so um anyway tune in for the next video oh fuck i forgot the uh i forgot the coins all right here are the coins we've got legacy with the silver uh steve with the gold and <laughs> look at that taters with the platinum now these power ratings numbers for a single war are very very low and uh in this war the fight distribution was really really even that's why these numbers are so low but anyway, all right, who cares? That is the video. Leave a like and a comment, subscribe, and in the next video, will I have a haircut? Tune in to find out. Subscribe. I'll see you then.